Hello all, my name is Krishnayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to discuss about LSTM recurrent neural networks. Now, many days have been over, I have not uploaded this particular video in my deep learning playlist, so we'll continue it and we'll try to finish it off. You know? So I've already discussed about simple recurrent neural network. We have understood what are the problems of simple recurrent neural network. I told you that there's a problem of vanishing gradient, right? Whenever you have a deep recurrent neural network and suppose your output is dependent on one of the inputs, which is there in the initial stages. So during the back propagation, there is the problem of vanishing gradient problem that basically means when the weights are getting updated with the help of back propagation using the chain rule, that time the weight actually becomes a very, very smaller value or uh, the weight updation does not happen because when you're finding the derivative of that specific weight, it will be a very small number. So if you have not seen my vanishing gradient problem, uh, just go and watch my complete deep learning playlist. All the videos have been uploaded. Now today, in order to solve this particular problem, we basically use something called as LSTM recurrent neural networks and GRU. Today in this particular video, we'll discuss about LSTM recurrent neural network. And remember guys, please do follow this blog from Kohlhaas blog. So Kohlhaas blog, I'll completely dedicate this particular video to this particular blog. This is a wonderful explanation and just by reading it, reading the text, you will be able to understand everything. Okay. Now let us go ahead and try to understand how does a recurrent neural network, um, you know, um, work. And here you can see that LSTMs are explicitly designed to avoid the long-term dependency problem. So they are actually focused on resolving the vanishing gradient problem itself. So this is how my simple recurrent neural network looks like. And this is basically my LSTM recurrent neural network looks like. Don't overcomplicate yourself by seeing so many gates, but we'll try to divide this whole architecture into, into some steps and then we'll try to understand that. So over here, <clears throat> the first thing that we need to discuss, we'll divide this into various components. So the first component is basically called as memory cell. Okay, we'll try to understand what exactly is memory cell. Then we have forget get gate. Okay, forget gate. Then we have the third thing is have we are having is something called as input gate, and the fourth thing that we basically have is called as output gate. Okay, so we'll try to understand what is memory cell. So this this whole part, this whole part is actually called as a memory cell. Okay, if I talk I talk about forget get the first this particular diagram is basically the forget gate. Then we have the input gate. This whole thing is basically the input gate. And then we have the output gate. This whole thing is basically my output gate. So we'll try to understand how does this particular thing work. And then we'll have a detailed discussion about each and every components. Now, before going ahead with respect to this particular video, guys, uh, see there is some more notation that we should focus on. The first notation, whenever we see something like this kind of shape, like square kind of uh, rectangle kind of shape, we should treat it as neural network layer. <clears throat> this uh, round shape is basically my pointwise operation. And uh, one more thing is that vector transfer. Vector transfer, you can see that whenever we are giving this arrow direction, we are just passing the values from one place to the another. We are basically transferring the vectors because all these operation, these are my inputs, okay? This XT is my input on time T. This is my input in my next uh, time step. This is my input in my previous time step. This is the output of this particular time step. Uh, and again, guys, this is the output for this particular time step. Like this, we should understand. This. And these are all the outputs we are getting, okay? So let us go ahead and try to understand the core idea behind LSTM. Now, the first thing that we need to discuss is about the memory cell. So memory cell is basically used to remember and forget things, okay? Memory cell is basically used for remembering and forgetting, okay? How do we remember and forget is based on the context of the input, okay? So based on the context of the input. Now suppose <clears throat> I have a use case where I'm actually trying to generate text. I want to generate text. Now when I'm generating text, usually the generation uh, of the text now suppose if i want to say that uh, hi my name is krish okay my name is krish and my age is my age is some value like 29 i'm 29 years old so this is my sentence now i want to generate what will come in front of it okay so i'll be training with some kind of data set now when i'm talking about this my recurrent neural network after coming to this particular position if it wants to generate some more text it should be definitely referring to my name 
okay so basically i'm talking about myself right crush over here so it should be uh, you know generating the text based on this particular noun so it should remember the context if you are changing the context then what happens is that now suppose what do i mean by changing the context the next line i'll write it as my brother name is wish okay so my brother name is okay i'm going to say wish so wish is my brother name now here i'm changing the context now at this particular stage the recurrent neural network when it is training he should forget some of the information of mine and actually add some more new information of my brother's name so that is what memory cell does you know it it as the context of the statements changes even though context has changed some of the information some of the previous information also it should remember and it should also be able to add some more new information okay so that is how it works now we'll try to understand this particular diagram now this ct minus 1 is basically my previous state output so this and these are almost same okay previous state output the first operation is basically my point wise operation so point wise operation okay now this is my point wise operation point wise operation what it says suppose this is my vectors i have numbers like 1 2 3 4 suppose these are my vectors of various of of any word okay of the output of my previous state suppose i do this point wise multiple of multiplication operation from the input that is given from this particular side so this is the input that is given over here and suppose my input are like and we'll discuss about this okay the input is something like one 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 zero zero one okay so total six yes six now when we do this point wise operation this basically means that i will multiply this number with this this is what point wise specific to location we will be multiplying the values okay then i'll be multiplying this and this this and this and i'll be getting this one vector so if i want to see the vector it will look like this one two three then when i multiply four multiplied by zero this will become zero zero and finally i'll be getting six now what is happening over here focus over here in this particular output when we are doing pointwise operation suppose if we have passed one 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 that basically means that we are and when we multiply this we are getting this information right right one two three but here we are getting zero zero and then we are getting six now this zero zero is basically forgetting this particular information now suppose if the rnn when the context changes when we are actually providing the input from here what will happen is that some of the information the rnn will forget because the context has changed if suppose the context has not changed okay if suppose the context has not changed this whole vectors will be something like this it will have all the values as one 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 okay that basically means that context is same i need not forget any of any of the information okay so i'll just pass this particular 111 and it will be able to remember everything okay so this is what is the memory cell now the other thing is that there is also one additional operation now again remember guys whenever the context is changing you are forgetting some information the rnn the lstm rnn is forgetting some information okay so when the context changes the it is forgetting some of the information but we should also add some more new information now so suppose i told that my brother name is wish now i am adding i am bringing a new context over there so that information needs to get added and this will get added from this particular input right so that information will get added over here finally this is my memory cell which will be continued on okay so as as the context changes some of the information will be dropped if the context does not change we'll just be uh, remembering those and all informations okay now this is this is basically the memory cell and this is how the working actually happens but still we are not clear how this particular input is actually given to this particular uh, point wise operation or for this particular addition operation so that we'll see to it okay now we'll go to the next cell the first component memory cell we understood okay now we will go to the first component which is my forget cell now forget cell is basically this particular part okay remember guys this blog is awesome you know i'll completely dedicate this video to this particular blog and when you read everything you'll be able to understand it very clearly because lstm is nothing but long short term memory the rnn should be able to remember your previous information whichever they are actually dependent on okay now this particular is this particular cell is actually called as forget gate okay forget gate why we say it as forget gate because remember when we are giving input from here after this particular in, uh, you know point wise operation it is forgetting some of the information and it is retaining some of the information now over here you can see that the first input that goes is something like x of t and this is ht of minus 1 or let me just go down there you will be able to clearly see this forget cell operation now here yes 
Now here we have a wonderful explanation, guys. I would love to see this explanation once again. I'll, I'll always, whenever I have, I have some doubts, I usually see this particular explanation itself. Now here, this is my input of this time t. This is my previous output. Now I'm passing this, and remember this particular operation that you see. If if I if I just go on the top, right? If I just go on the top, you can see over here what is that particular operation. This is basically concatenate. Okay, we are concatenating over here. So this is my we are actually concatenating okay now this concatenation this concatenation is basically given by uh, which uh, by this particular mathematical equation that is wff ht minus 1 xt now what concatenation basically means i'll, I'll just divide this wff um, remember in my previous videos of recurrent neural network i told you that whenever we are passing this previous output also there will be some weights initialized over here there will be some weights initialized over here also right so this will be suppose i say uh, this is my input this is my output okay so previous output and this is my pre, uh, current input these are the weights that i got initialized now this weights when it is getting concatenated along with the input we can actually say it as you can see this operation this w of f is nothing but it is the combination it is the combination of two weights okay so the uh, the first weight is like you can write it as w of t minus 1 and this is w of t so this two weights okay okay let me just write it down once again it will be the combination of two weights one is whatever we are initializing over here like w of i okay dot since we are concatenating this is uh, w of h w of h minus 1 let me write it down like this so this w of f is nothing but combining two weights okay concatenating two weights the next thing is that whenever we concatenate we are actually concatenating the input and this particular thing so we have actually written as ht minus one and xt okay i can also write it as common so this two operation basically says this and this is my bias and this basically looks like the equation y is equal to mx plus c or you can also write y is equal to wt of x plus b right so like this only it looks so this is my weight this is my input and this is my bias okay simple operation over here now after this 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 whole equation is passed to a sigmoid activation function now sigmoid activation function you know that it makes the input it makes the input or um, whatever input we are giving it transforms it between 0 to 1 now remember whenever i say this is my input right suppose my previous input is not similar to this particular input not similar basically means <clears throat> there is that uh, not similar basically means that there is a change in context change in context now when we say change in context that basically means whenever we create that vectors okay the previous output vectors will be different with respect to this particular vector right or the previous input vector may be different with respect to this particular vector suppose i say king and if i say queen these two vectors are almost similar right these two vectors if we try to convert this by using word to vec these are almost similar but if i say king and if i say poor right these two vectors may be completely different right now when there is so much change in the vectors and after this particular operation when we apply the sigmoid activation function this will either give me very very much near to ones or zeros okay so all this combination of vectors will be giving me ones and zeros <clears throat> Now, if the vector is similar, we will be actually getting more number of ones, more number of ones in this particular output. After applying over here, here we'll be getting more number of ones. Now, if we are getting more number of ones, that basically means the context has not changed. And when we apply this particular operation, that basically means that we are just passing this information. We are remembering all the information. Suppose if the vector changes and we have values like 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, this kind of vectors, and it is not similar to the previous vector or previous input vector, at that time what will happen? This particular output, this particular output will be having a lot of zeros. And when we do this pointwise operation, it will be forgetting many things because the context has changed, right? It is forgetting, it is forgetting these all things because the context has changed, but it will not forget everything. Okay, some of the information will still be captured even though the context has changed. Okay, and now it is working like a long short term memory. You are able to remember things, right? And remember that this whole thing is basically called as a cell state. Cell state. 
okay just try to understand this i know it looks a little bit complication but if you understand each and everything you'll be able to understand this okay my first operation is done this is basically called as my this whole thing is called as my forget gate forget gate okay my simple operation we are able to do it now let us go to the next step now uh, we have passed in the concatenation operation also on the top sorry pointwise operation now here and the next step is to decide what new information we are going to store in the cell states okay now <clears throat> what we are doing is that we are giving our input we are giving this particular information because i told you that this pointwise operation this pointwise operation that i have given over here is basically we are adding information we are sorry we are adding information right in adding information to what to the memory cell to the memory cell memory cell this will remember everything okay whatever we are trying to add whatever we are trying to make it forget and this is all handled by rn itself now two types of operation the same operation like how we have performed over here same operation will be getting here then we'll also be performing a tanh operation now tanh operation basically what you know it, it converts its input between minus 1 to plus 1 okay minus 1 to plus 1 now based on the conversion what we do is that from this also we are actually performing a pointwise uh, pointwise operation of multiplication okay now again whichever are highly positive whichever are zeros you know that will get converted uh, into zeros because based on my sigmoid output you know i'll be having ones and zeros again if my matrix is completely dissimilar it needs to add some more information when i'm actually doing the pointwise operation with tanh okay then finally i'll get the output over here okay and then i will be adding this information to my memory cell so this this whole this whole layer is basically called as my input layer this whole thing is basically called as my input layer and the equation is basically given in the same way like how this i of t is nothing but this this is the operation c of t is nothing but the output of this this is the operation okay understand in this step what we are doing is that we are just adding information adding information after this particular operation you know so this sigmoid whichever are the meaningful context it will retrieve after this pointwise operation after doing the tanh function this will give you all your values between minus 1 to plus 1 this will give all your values between 0 to 1 now when i am doing this multiplication operation with this value you know that whichever are nearer to 1 that will only be that context will only be provided whichever are zero, near to zeros you multiply it with zero it will become zero so that information is also skipped so only the meaningful information is actually passed and after this addition pointwise operation what we are going to do is that we are going to add that in our memory cell pretty much simple <clears throat> now let us go to the next step okay so this is my input layer similarly now my output layer is nothing but so i have done my input layer and uh, if you want to still divide this this is my first step you can see that all the information is given now it's now time to update all the old cell state into the new cell state that is c of t this previous step already decided what to do just we need to do it actually just read this okay basic reading is more than sufficient to understand this now i've i've, I've showed you both the operation tanh and this is basically my multiplication operation pointwise multiplication operation that basically means that any new information from this tanh function will only be taken if the context is changed that will get added to this okay now if we go down if we go down finally my output layer now this particular output this particular concatenation of this information will again pass to a sigmoid function same operation over here like this will get over here whatever information is there in the memory cell that will get uh, you know that from there we'll actually perform a pointwise operation okay so this this layer is basically called as an output layer output layer okay so this particular information from the memory cell after it passes to the tanh function which will convert this into minus 1 to plus 1 and this sigmoid function which is between 0 to 1 will get combined by this pointwise operation all these values will only retrieve the information which are having some meaningful context and that will be passed as my output to my next cell okay and this next cell will also be having the same diagram like we have actually seen like this and there will be a memory cell and again we'll be getting the output 
okay so this is a simple operation guys and this is the equation now now see major thing that you need to understand why we are doing this okay why we are doing this let me just go back to my first diagram over here <clears throat> the main thing that you need to observe over here if there is new meaningful information okay then only this concatenation this operation will take place if there is no meaningful operation no meaningful values that basically means my this input and this input are almost similar that basically means my all my vectors will be similar and when i'm passing through the sigmoid function it will always give me one 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 okay okay and when i'm passing through this particular information you will be able to see that all this particular information will actually give me zero 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 now when i'm saying zero 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 see this first i'm doing this multiplication operation okay multiplication operation with one will actually give me the same same cell state right same same c of t now when i'm after doing this point wise operation if i'm adding to zero again i'm getting the c of t unless and until there is no context change this memory will not change so this 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 looks like something called as resnet if you know about resnet guys the resnet in cnn right the transfer learning techniques in resnet you have an option to pass the input directly to this cell okay if this particular cell is not that important or if this layer is not that important you can directly pass the input to this it works like this only if this particular layer does not have or if the input does not have some meaningful context it is just going to skip how it is going to skip you by applying sigmoid function since your cell matrix will be almost similar to this you'll be getting ones 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 so when you do this particular operation you'll be again getting the same cell state and then over here you'll be able to see 0 0 0 0 0 and after this when you're applying this particular operation you'll be getting the same cell state value so c of t and c of t plus one okay this will be almost similar sorry c of t minus one and c of t c of t will be almost similar unless and until there is no context change okay again guys i know this looks confusion confusing but just try to see to this i try to see the explanation that i have actually provided over here try to read this particular blog it is pretty amazing you know how they have explained step by step but understand how you should actually learn this you have to learn this through various ways one is you need to understand about memory cell the second thing is that you need to understand about forget gate and the third thing is that you need to understand about the input layer and the fourth thing is basically you need to understand about the output layer so this was all about lstm my next video i'll be coming up with practical implementation there is a lot of varieties of lstm okay one is called as sequence to sequence one is called as uh, vec to sequence and one is also called as vec to vec so we'll try to solve use cases on this and you'll be able to understand a whole lot of things you know i hope i've made it clear but again if you want to understand lstm make sure that you watch this whole um blog okay and you just read it after reading it you'll be understanding over here this is a vanishing gradient problem. definitely this is a vanishing gradient. in order to solve that in order to remove the long-term dependency i'm just using lstm so that it can remember some of the information from the past information right so if i don't have any context change even my last layer output can have all the information from my first layer input itself so this is what is the explanation about lstm so i hope you like this particular video Please do subscribe the channel. If you are not already subscribed, I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you and love. Bye bye.